Swedenborg describes heavenly peace versus the, the peace of, of the ego, you know, right. and that, that you can, he, he's trying to describe heavenly peace, and he's saying it's sort of, people think that peace is when things are going well for them, you know, mm -hmm. that you kind of get what you want, um, but it's different, because that's, that's, that's temporary, that things go well, but as soon as they don't go well, you're not happy anymore, but the heavenly peace is specifically, you know, the, the peace of, you know, the, the ego piece comes and goes based on, am I doing better or worse than other people? Am I getting what I want? But w the closer you get to, hey, I, I love everybody that I interact with, then, it, you know, there's none of this, oh, they got so oh, good, they got something good. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm glad that these people are happy. What can I do to help? Mm -hmm. When you're in that mode, uh, that that's the heavenly peace. And then that lasts and, and gets mm -hmm. better and better. And from when we're sitting here in the ego, we think like that, that's nothing, that's boring. That wouldn't give me anything I need. I couldn't survive on that. But, you know, it's a little leap of faith to go that way. And often it takes, you know, coming across things that you can't handle, you know, yeah. and that's when you get toward it. But yeah, the difference, heavenly peace and, and the peace of the world. And I think it's, it's not my will that can experience that peace. It wants that peace. Just like Herod said, I want to worship the young child too. No, he wants to destroy the young child. So it's like, well, what's this peace beyond understanding? What's this peace they're talking about? Oh, that's the peace that's already there in the new will. If I can let go of my grasping of the old will and holding on to it, be freed from that, I can start to experience God's enjoyment of being and doing, expressing love. It has, doesn't have to have anything to do with me. That's the peace that heaven, and it can't be turned to its opposite. You know, one of the people I studied was Gurdjieff. And he said, anything that can be turned to its opposite is not a good affection. It's a natural affection. So you say, oh, I'm so happy we got down to the park and I have a beer of the best seat in the world and everything, the satisfied ego. It is a good day. And then a guy comes and sits in front of you with one of these big hats. What? Uh, you know, yeah. it can be turned to its opposite. That good isn't good. Whereas true peace can't be turned to its opposite. It's like God can't be anything but good because he is good. He isn't being good. He is good. So that's a state we'll get to. Whereas, and it says, don't put your heart on that which changes. Put it on what changes not. The kind of state you're talking about that doesn't change. That's where my heart wants to be. Yeah, and that's what you get people uh, talking so highly about unconditional right. stuff, unconditional right. love. And like um, parenting, that, you know, the, the, the better state you're in is, you know, you can be setting rules and discipline, but you're not fluctuating in your level of love towards a child, you know, right. and that that's the kind of constancy that when you can get there, uh, you know, you're going to get out of these, these cycles. Yeah. I think that's an older state. It, to begin with, it does look like to a child that it's a punishing or rewarding God because all they have is the ego at age two to, you know, the mm -hmm. teens. So if you, if you don't behave, you don't get the card tonight. If you don't behave, you can't watch TV. So it's a, oh, this is love, punishing, rewarding. The truth is they are making you go to bed early because they love you and want you to be healthy tomorrow. But you don't sense that. You just, yeah. I'm not going to watch a TV program. So you impart to them this conditional love because your condition is, if you do what I want, then you love me. If you don't do what I want, you don't love me. You're no good. You hate me. Yeah. It's not coming from the parents. It's coming from the ego and the kids. Right? Yeah. And you could never, you could never, as, as a child, you could never put two and two together with the, oh, I slept more last night. Right. So I feel better today. You would never get right. that. Right. And I think, you know, Swedenborg is saying that, that God is constantly making, you know, we, we often are upset about the way our life goes. Right. But God is making these administrative decisions in it with that kind of view. Like, I, I know that the deeper systems that, yeah. that make you who you are, and you really want to stay up tonight, but if I let you, you're going to be miserable tomorrow, and you're not going to know why you're miserable. You're going to take it out on everything. Yeah. Those, those kind of things. I counsel people who are addicted to cocaine or something like that. Mm -hmm. And to talk to them about what it's like to be sober and the enjoyments of being sober, sitting down at dinner with your, your, your wife, playing with your kids, you know, playing a game of cards. It can't compete with the high of a cocaine hit. So they don't, you know, they don't know. A person who's been in recovery for six or seven months and now they're starting to experience their taste buds for what's normal and what's really healthy. It's starting to emerge. Oh, I can't believe it. Last night I was home with my family. We were just watching TV. I was working on the kitchen, 
the one where I thought, promised my wife I'd do for years. It was heaven. You don't tell a guy who's shooting up the day before that you don't to compare the two. And the same with a child. He doesn't want to hear you talking about, oh, you feel a lot better tomorrow. You won't be so tired in school and stuff like that. Daddy, I want the TV program and I want some popcorn. You know what I mean? It's like that high. And I think that's one of the mistakes people think. And I remember talking about sobriety in a meditation. It was sort of my, to God, well, when are you going to give me enlightenment? When are you going to give me these spiritual highs we're talking about? And he said, well, you think I'm a spiritual pusher? <laughs> and I really did. I wanted a competing high to replace my natural high. It's an entirely different, discrete degree of pleasure. This pleasure doesn't even recognize it as pleasure. Like you said, it's boring. Yeah. It's like, give me some peace and quiet. Just give me some peace and quiet. Tell that to somebody who likes a rock band. They have three TVs going on, the headphones on. Can't we just have some quiet? So they turn it off. Well, nothing's happened, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing. So I think that is a mistake. We try and compare the two, and God is in charge. And he knows what you truly value if you break out of the drama and the excitement and the adrenaline rush of life. Yeah, and, and that it's kind of the new will or the, the church, the, the thing you're building inside yourself that's feeding off those healthy kind of mm -hmm. things is a, is a process. And it's a subtle, yeah. long process. And that eventually, you know, way down the road, you, you can get incredible happiness and deep and full and lasting. Okay. But yeah, it takes time and it takes, you know, a little bit of like fasting, you know, like, yeah. okay, we're, we're without this. And that Swedenborg would, would say he'd been able to dis, or, um, been able to experience heavenly peace. Mm -hmm. And he's, it was mm -hmm. so awesome that I can't describe yeah. it. It's hard yeah. to put it into yeah. words, but that's not where you start. Right. And the state that can experience that, which is a new will, yeah. can't be experienced by the lower will, which like in one of Swedenborg's works he talks about the lower angels or even the devils wanted to go up into heaven and see it. Yeah. It's yeah. a place, right? You can go see it. And they went up there and wasn't anything there. It's like, well, you know, a drug addict saying, well, take me to a sober place. And they t you take him to an NA party. Well, yeah. What's happening, man? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, they're not drinking and they're not shooting up. Well, that's nothing. Yeah, yeah. it is nothing. You don't understand, do you? Right, right, right. <laughs> so. You have to have a little trust in the process yeah and that there is uh, taste buds within you the spiritual taste buds that can yeah. savor a much higher delight which is much deeper and long lasting in fact eternal compared to the temporary rush of a shooting up and stuff like that so it's trusting that you are actually not only a natural being but you're a spiritual being with spiritual sensations that your natural doesn't understand and it is meant to understand so it's really starting to understand that you are spiritual in a physical natural body but as long as you think you're physical and natural then physical and natural pleasure is top of the line it is for the physical and natural it's just the beginning place for the spiritual. Yeah, and you see like uh, the difference in the impact of those pleasures on the rest of the world. Right. You know that that that's one of the big differences is in what Swedenborg is describing as you know heavenly pleasure or hellish pleasure is that mm -hmm. heavenly pleasure you're with you're with other people doing it. You know, as in mm -hmm. what's making you happy is making other people happy. You know, like oh, I was home with my family and the the meaning like you can oh yeah I was, I was really happy partying mm -hmm. last night but that's coming at a cost to other people right. whereas this other kind good for you good for them yeah you know, and that's part heaven is is an awareness of the community and the your happiness is linked to mine and mine is linked to yours yeah. and, and that's how i want it and they're the same they're really one may father may they know that they're in me and i'm in you as we're uh i'm in you and we're in them as we're one you know i'm sorry I misphrase it sure but it's the same thing that i believe the infinite will is manifesting everything that is. And all the finited wills through you and me, the will with the new will within me, is a finite form of that infinite will. So it's in harmony. So it's the same will. So what's good for me is good for you. Whereas love of the self is all about me and it's only me, and I take away from you. So once you get into that love your neighbor as yourself, it's not as much as yourself. It's as yourself. It's the same will being received by a different form. So your will and their will is the same. They may be an athlete and you may be wanting to get a good seat, but your both will is the same thing, a good time for the people there. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think that 
the uh, the love self or you know the the ego actually it's only happy if other people are unhappy to an extent like right. I live in a house right now and right. and I know that if, even if the house didn't change at all but I knew nobody else's house was this good in the whole right. world right. Right. I would you know my ego that would mean everything to them or if I you know suddenly my ego's like I want a really cool house so suddenly I got transferred to like the coolest house in, in the world wherever it is like on some mountain looking out over the ocean and it's like mm -hmm. super great house and I was there yeah but then I learned that everybody else in the world got a better house than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, suddenly, it's cool. The same view, same house, everything. It would be like, well, this isn't that great. Yeah, and that's called uh, the contrasting opposites. I want to compare it to you and I want to be better than you. Yeah. And knowing that you're one, unity consciousness rather than duality consciousness is you are one. And there is a happiness in one. You're happiness. So there isn't you have to have the best house. Uh, and that's something the ego can't comprehend yeah and it's, it's insane to think about things that you wouldn't want to have happen to you and you're happy if they happen to someone else like that i can see why swedenborg calls it the pleasures of insanity yeah because if you step back from it it's crazy yeah but the the pleasures uh you know heavenly peace you're looking at that step back from it and you know that's good that that looks that feels good and it is good and that's well, the difference the ego-based happiness which you're talking about there's two examples one from the 12th step is a uh Chuck C., he's one of the old-timers. He said, the most unhappy person I ever met in the world was a guy worth $125 million. Yeah. He said, well, why was he unhappy? Because his brother had $130 million. Yeah. And then the Hindu religion, they have a thing called rajasic, which is the lowest level of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And that's ego-based pleasure. And the example they use is there's two guys, and they have businesses across from each other, the same business, the little shops in India. And uh, they're always competing. They want to do better. They always compare. How much are you making it? So this guy's rubbing that thing, and a gym, you know, genie jumps out. He says, I'm going to give you whatever you want. One conditioner. But I'll give you anything you want. He says, well, anything? He says, yeah. Give me a million dollars if you want that. What's your condition? I'm going to give one, two of them to your guy across the street. Yeah. So if you give me a million dollars, you're going to give him two million dollars, yeah. So whatever I do for you, I do twice for him. He says, let me think about it. So he comes the next day, well, what would you come up with? He says, I want you to blind me in one eye. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's rajasic pleasure. Yes. And that is the nature of the insanity. Yeah. And that the ego really finds pleasure in it. And another person in Swedenborg says this. You can tell it's a love of self if you find happiness in someone else's unhappiness and you're sad in their success. I know that feeling. You don't have to tell me Shot in that's that. someone else. Yeah. <laughs> I know that part of me. But what Swedenborg tells you, there's also a part of you that really finds the happiness of another as if it were your own. Mm -hmm. And that's the direction I want to be going. You know? And that, and, the, yeah. And we're directed. Right. And that's the new will. And that we can be trying in little increments day to day to be following those pleasures and you can be opening yourself up more and more to that and making you know becoming more native in that and calling back up those yeah. remains you're talking about at the beginning happinesses as a little child you know you can pull you can pull this together and grow that garden yeah. Yeah. and that's the one with with lasting benefits in yeah. it. well that that gradually uh, being led and directed by the lord towards the higher level pleasures of the new will mm -hmm finding happiness in another person's happiness. And away from the pleasures of insanity, I find happiness in my own happiness. I find happiness in your failures. I'm being led away from that. <clears throat> it's a very gradual process, and there's a short-term regeneration, he calls it. Uh, you're tempted to find pleasure in someone else's mistake. And you say, I would, but I would not. I will not, because it's against your will, God. So recognize that, oh, that's my will. And left to myself, I would go and enjoy their failure, tell people about it and stuff like that. I would go with that. But I'm not going to because I want your will. And that turning towards his will and refusing to entertain and eat that will is making that gradual turn. You think of a big uh, you know, aircraft carrier or something. You can't make a quick right turn. 
but you can start to process and that I use that over and over I would but I will not because contrary to your will gossip is one of you know I hear sure. some gossip oh man this is good I'm walking into the coffee shop and the guy says he can't say oh man but this is so good I will to do it but I won't because I want your will not my own and if you do that over and over and get a habit of that gradually you start to see clearly the destination where God's leading you, which is good, behold, very good. Yeah, kind of like uh, web searches, you know, that whatever you've been searching mm -hmm. for is what shows up mm -hmm. in your results. Mm -hmm. So the more often that you search for, uh, you know, you make that program, for, okay, this, I, I recognize, and Swedenborg says that, that recognizing your, the, the negative tendencies in yourself and labeling mm -hmm. them is, mm -hmm. a, is important. Mm -hmm. So I, okay, I recognize I have a tendency towards this kind of thing, which is, you know, harmful to someone or taking pleasure in mm -hmm. them not doing well or being hurt. So recognize it, label it, and even though I acknowledge my, that there's a part of me that, that is, is into that, I'm not going to do it because yeah. there's there's another player here in my consciousness that can block that. Doing that over and over, that changes your your search, your search history, you know, so, so that now, you know, slowly the algorithm is shifting. And now, yeah. now, uh, you know, 25 million years later, uh, I don't even have the inclination to do that. It's anymore. not even on the computer. I, I did a, you know, I'm in a program that deals with people who have problems with pornography, right? Yeah. <clears throat> if you click on, you, for whatever that is, you're going to have a lower level of that to offer to you. You know, it's going in a bad direction. Uh, I've been watching like sports and they say, you know, okay, you're watching diving. Do you want to see the bloopers? I said, well, that'd be fun. Pretty soon they're offering, you want to see someone dying by uh, skydiving? Yes. So I've had recently some offers. It looks like it's, it's the wrong direction, though. I don't want this thing knowing what direction I'm tending towards and then playing on it and leading me, so I just don't go. And after a little bit of time, they aren't offering anymore. They aren't wasting their time. Yeah, so. it's a good point that, <clears throat> that, that um, kind of in, in the the hierarchy of the mind and the spirit that Swedenborg is talking about, that that good things are linked to higher good things and higher right. good things and evil things or, or destructive things are linked lower and lower. And that's a great example. That, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I'll just watch something that's a little silly and then yeah. there's always one or two choices that go go further down the, yeah, yeah, further yeah. Down the route. And that, that, and that, you know, just like advertisers know, like, oh, if a person is interested in this, they may want to give this a try. So right. we're going to advertise to this group. So you just don't want to put yourself in in the zone where you'll get advertised yeah, to there yeah, yeah yeah and i don't i don't want my purian interest to be inflated i want it to be deflated i can't do that if i'm feeding it in, in the 12-step recovery they say you have two dogs a nice one and an evil one which one wins the one you feed right yeah. <clears throat> so it's the same with my mind yeah the negative states are there positive states are there. who's gonna win which one are you feeding and it's a pro <laughs> gradual it's process it's gradual. not like oh i you know i you know, I don't want to not feed a dog in real life, but we'll say I, I didn't feed this fire or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like it got went out right away, no. but over the hours, you know, yeah, that's yeah. going to burn lower. And and one drop, unfortunately, you starve it to death or you don't give it any water. Yeah. And it's been 10 days and it looks really dead. One eye dropper to think, bam. Yes. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Hold it. I only gave you one peek. Yeah. Yeah, but that shows you're interested. <laughs> yes. So. Totally. The neural networks are already yeah, built. So. Yeah, we're already there. We, yeah. just, we just wondered if you remembered us. Or, so we remember you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. All right, man. Then All right.